Well, um, good afternoon, St. Helens. Uh, Mr. Spence here. We're going to carry on the story um, that Mr. Chapel started yesterday um, of the giraffe, the pelly, um, and me. So here we go. I stood there enthralled. Then I heard the giraffe singing to the pelican, sorry, saying to the pelican in the next window, Pelly, my dear, be so good as to fly down and bring that small person up here to talk to us. Well, at once, the pelican spread his huge white wings and flew down onto the road beside me. Hop in, he said, opening his enormous beak. And you can just see there the beak opening. Uh, I'm not trying to get this book right. There we go. The, the beak opening there. Um, there we go. The beak opening and the boy looking in. Um, go on, the monkey shouted from up on the window. The pelly isn't going to swallow you. Climb in. I said to the pelican, I'll only get in if you promise not to shut your beak once I'm inside. You've got nothing to fear, cried the pelican. And let me tell you why. I've got a very special beak. A special beak have I. You'll never see a beak so fine. I don't care where you go. There's magic in this beak of mine. Hop in and don't say no. I will not hop in, I said, unless you swear on your honour that you won't shut it once I'm inside. I don't really like small dark places. When I've done what I'm just about to do, said the pelican, I won't be able to shut it. You, you don't seem to understand how my beak works. Well, show me, I said, and watch this, cried the pelican. I watched in amazement as the top half of the pelican's beak began to slide smoothly backwards into its head until the whole thing was almost out of sight. It bends and it goes back down inside the back of my neck, cried the pelican. Is that not sensible? Is it not magical? It's unbelievable, I said. It's exactly like one of those metal tape measures my father's got at home. When it's out, it's straight. And when you slide it back in, it bends and it disappears. And there's a little diagram um, just underneath there showing how that beak slides all the way back, a bit like a tape measure. Precisely, said the pelican. You can see the top half is absolutely no use to me unless I'm chewing fish. The bottom half is what counts, my lad. The bottom half of this glorious beak of mine is the bucket in which we carry our window cleaning water. So if I didn't slide the top half away, I'd be standing around all day holding it open. So I slide it away for the rest of the day, even so I'm still able to speak. And wherever I've flown, it has always been known as the pel pelican's patented beak. If I want to eat fish, that's my favourite dish. All I do is I give it a tweak. In the blink of an eye, out it pops and they cry. It's the pelican's patented beak. Stop showing off down there, shouted the monkey from the upstairs window. Hurry up and bring that small person up. The giraffe is waiting. Well, I climbed into his big orange beak and with a swoosh of wings, the pelican carried me back to his perch on the windowsill. And there he is, flying up to the windowsill. The giraffe looked out of her window at me and said, how do you do? What's your name? Billy, I told her. Well, Billy, she said, we need your help and we need it fast. We must have some windows to clean. We've spent every penny we had on buying this house and we've got to earn some more money quickly. The pelly is starving. The monkey is famished and I'm perishing with hunger. The pelly needs fish. Um, the, the monkey needs nuts and I'm even more difficult to feed. I'm a geranius giraffe. And a geranius giraffe cannot eat anything except the pink and purple flowers of the tinkle tinkle tree. But those, as I'm sure you know, are hard to find and very expensive to buy. Well, the pelican cried out, right now, I'm so hungry I could eat a stale sardine. Has anyone seen a stale sardine or a bucket of rotten cod? I'd eat the lot upon the spot. I'm such a hungry bod. Well, every time the pelican spoke, the beak I was standing in jiggled madly up and down. And the more excited he got, the more it jiggled. The monkey said, what's Pelly's really crazy about? What Pelly's really crazy about is salmon. Oh yes, said the pelican, a salmon, glorious salmon. I dream about it all day long, but I never get any. And I dream about walnuts, said the monkey. A walnut fresh from the tree is scrumptious, galumptious, so flavoury, savoury, so sweet to eat that it makes me all wobbly just thinking about it. And exactly that moment, a huge white Rolls Royce pulled up right below us and a chauffeur in a blue and gold uniform got out. He was carrying an envelope in one gloved hand. Good heavens, I whispered. That's the Duke of Hampshire's car. Who's he, said the giraffe. Oh, only the richest man in England, I said. Well, the chauffeur knocked on the door of the grubber. We're up here, the giraffe called down to him. He looked up and saw us. 
He saw the giraffe, the pelly, the monkey and me, all staring down at him from above, but not a muscle moved in his face, not an eyebrow was raised. The chauffeurs of very rich men are never surprised by anything they see. The chauffeur said, His Grace, the Duke of Hampshire, has instructed me to deliver this envelope to the ladderless window cleaning company. <gasps> That's us, cried the monkey. The giraffe said, uh, Be so good as to open the envelope and read us the letter. Well, the chauffeur unfolded the letter and began to read. Dear sirs, I saw your notice as I drove by this morning. I've been looking for a decent window cleaner for the last 50 years, but I've not found one yet. My house has 677 windows in it, not counting the greenhouses, and all of them are filthy. Kindly come and see me as soon as possible. Yours truly, Hampshire. That, added the chauffeur in a voice filled with awe and respect, was written by His Grace, the Duke of Hampshire, in his own hand. And you can see the chauffeur there at the bottom holding that little note as he was reading it. Well, the giraffe said to the chauffeur, please tell His Grace, the Duke, that we will be with him as soon as possible. Well, the chauffeur touched his cap and got back into the Rolls Royce. Whoopee! shouted the monkey. Fantastic, cried the pelican. That must be the best window cleaning job in the world. Billy, said the giraffe, what is the house? called and how do we get there it's called hampshire house i said it's just over the hill i'll show you the way we're off cried the monkey we're off to see the duke and we're going to leave you there just before they get to arrive at this incredible house and look at all those windows that they're going to have to clean so we'll find out what happens with mr chapel tomorrow well thanks for joining us i um, hope you're doing really well at home and we'll look forward to seeing you soon then bye bye